From Oxford, Hypnodisc. Made by the Rose family over five months, the frame and body shells aluminium, the design computer-aided, the weapons are rotating discs, spinning at 600 revs per minute. Will it be the Rose amongst thorns here? Hello, my name's Dave, and I'm the team captain of Hypnosis. Our team members are Derek, my brother, and my father, Ken. The way our robot can pull a car, the main weapon is this 18 kilo flywheel, which runs at 500 RPM, which can do this. Robot ears, stand by. There's Hypnodisc and waiting to bloom. The roses, Dave, Derek, and Kenneth. And Robo Geddon with the Ryle family, Three, young William, Brenda, two, and Ginger one. on the right. And in comes Robo Geddon straight from the start against Hypnodisc. Look at that blade spinning away. Oh, off goes Hypnodisc. The message there, Robo, get on out of it. In comes Robo Geddon again, though. Hypnodisc spins and comes in on the attack. Oh, goodness me! Poor old Robo Geddon crumpled by Hypno D I S C. Oh, no more letters in that. Never mind. Hypno Disco, it certainly is though, dancing around on the attack of Robo getting being shredded here. All that work, a hundred hours over four months to prepare Robo getting and shattered in seconds by the Hypno Disc team. Again, look at the front of it, buckled and torn. It's sort of limping along. The shell fluttering away, almost coming off. Oh, how sad! The boggle eyes! It's like, oh. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't laugh. Look at that laid bear. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Poor old William Ryle. He's only 13. He's put this machine together. <laughs> oh, dear, look. There's nothing left of it now. Hypno disc, what a mighty machine this is. <laughs> it's on fire, I think, as well, Robo Ken. There's smoke coming out. <laughs> ah, what's Ginger saying there to little William? <laughs> There's a way back into this for us, I don't think so. <laughs> the wheels buckled now as well. There's no shell, no wheels, no weapon, no hope. Oh, hypno disc. This is the most complete destruction I think we've seen in Robot Wars ever. Oh! There's the CO2 Six. canister. Oh, that was splendid. <laughs> well, well. I've never seen anything like that before on Robot Wars. I mean, it completely battered that robot. It just ripped it to pieces. It's devastating, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to find that in my laundry basket. Never mind, it's a killer lot. We want, we want it as a war of weaponry. Yeah. And how come the disc is so destructive? It's, uh, it's the weight and the energy contained uh, in the disc when it's spinning at um, up to about 500 RPM. It's a brilliant robot. I think you could go all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Hypno Disc! <laughs> What's that? This is the design. That's my, uh, that's my son Matthew. Yeah, that's No! Yeah, How old is your son Matthew? Yeah. He's three and a half. Three and a half Matthew yeah. designed Hypnodisc. He did indeed. And <laughs> it is phenomenal. Yes, it is. Um, it's been, you were right. It, yeah, he designed it for maximum uh, damage and that's what we did. It's incredible. I mean, really shocking. I've never seen a robot cut in half. It was quite, quite terrifying, wasn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> and we should be expecting more. OK, you'll recognise the disc. It spins, it wreaks havoc, and it's about to go in there and wreak havoc for the second time. Right. Guys, come over with me a minute, because this is a little confidential chat I want to have with you. I don't want anyone else hearing it, especially not from the opposition. I found out what your Achilles heel is. Have you? Yeah. Tell yes. us about it. What is it? Do you not know what it no, is? No, we don't. You do know what it is, because basically, if you go over the flames, your plastic melts on your disc. Is this right? No, no, that's, no, that's incorrect no, information. Yeah. It's all steel and aluminium. No, sure? plastic, no plastic in there at all. Are you sure? Absolutely positive, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So there is no Achilles heel, that's what you're telling well, me? Well, there is, yeah. Yeah, there is. Go on. It's top secret. Oh, yeah. go on, you no, tell us. I'm not tell you tell anyone, am I? Like. Well, we We're, can be flipped, can't we? Flip us if we, over. If we go on the well, side, yeah. it'll be quite exciting. Can I flip you over? Yeah, possibly. possibly yeah. Flip Shh. Walls have ears, you know. Have the spies worked? The stealth team reckon their robot's been made out of sticky back plastic and have those bin bags at the ready. Robot ears, stand by. 
And there is Hypno Disc. Three. Nothing covert two, about that. One, stealth. This is a great match here. Two very impressive looking robots. And Hypno Disc is just about the best we've seen so far, I think, in this series of robot wars with that greatly powerful blade. Something came off. Stealth straight at the start there. I think it might have been a, a nut or a bolt only. Can they get in with the flipper? Have they realized that underneath Hypno Disc? Grinding away, 600 reps per minute on that great disc at the front. Again coming in on the attack on Stealth. Oh, just flipping it around and look at the back blade of Stealth. Immediately knocked to one side and buckled. Matilda thinking twice about attacking the disc. Well, look at this. Jumped up in the air, no disc, but the blade of Stealth completely flying off. Off goes the blade of Stealth. Hit no disc flown up into the air. Bits and pieces flying around the arena floor like a great fucking Bronco. Hypnotist back and together in one piece, unlike Stealth. That's another piece that's flown off from somewhere. Debris all over the arena floor. Oh, look at the damage there to Stealth again from Hypnotist. This is wonderful stuff. Until they're again retreating into the CPZ and wisely so. Oh, Stealth. Hardly anything left now. Down to bare bones. Groggy, reeling in dismay, more mayhem and machinery. The machinations in the minds of the Hypnodisc team, malevolent. In it comes again, slamming stealth against Arena Wall. Oh, and they know they're seconds away from oblivion. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Wonderful. All our planning in Robot Wars aimed at this. Devilish. Destruction, damage, demolition. Sticky back plastic. Oh dear, you'll need months of welding after. <laughs> Up goes the flipper, that was the danger. No chance of Hitler just being flipped now. Oh dear. Cease. The guts of stealth exposed. Well, stealth's not so stealthy no more. The winner, of course, is Hypnodisc. People are very frightened now. Well, we've still got a few problems with the control. I was, uh, I was stuck in the corner with uh, Matilda for a while, uh -huh. and uh, that wasn't me attacking Matilda. That was uh, right. it sort of on its mind of its own. So, uh, and then if you can shear through a flipper just like that, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the benefit. Very well done. I think this Thanks. is the most destructive robot we've seen on Robot Wars so far. Thank you. Thank well Thanks, cheers. Good it's now Berserk 2 with Stuart Graham and Chris O'Connell and the team against Hypnodisc in the final. The Rose family, Dave and Derek, the twins and Kenneth, Dad. Robot ears, stand by. And there we have Berserk 2. Three. Huddersfield against two. Hypnodisc One. of Oxford. Activities. Berserk 2, a tentative start. One run away. I don't blame them. Oh, coming in on the attack though with a forklift. Well, that's the first time we've seen Hypnodisc even put off in this heat. And bravery here by Berserk 2, looking to use that forklift to flip Hypnodisc. The Achilles heel, we know that, and obviously the Berserk 2 team have realised it too. And Hypnodisc here, befuddled, bemused, boxed in, but now breaking out, oh, and up and over goes Berserk 2 from the arena floor. Now they can right themselves, I'm sure. But look at this, driving on to the arena spike. They can use their weaponry to right themselves, the forklift and the hammer. Stuart Ford, Chris O'Connell, trying to get Berserk 2 up and over and right it again. In comes Hypno Disc, but not as punishing so far. The body shell is alloy on Berserk 2 and withstanding the attack so far of Hypnotis. Hypnotis flipped up as well by the arena spike. <laughs> Get up there. The Rose boys will want to come back in with a concerted drive and get that spinning disc cutting in on the shell of Berserk 2, but it's Berserk 2 at the moment trying to create some damage, but pushed into the CPZ and kill a lot, and this could be decisive. Don't forget, should he go to judges, they will be looking to mark on style, aggression, control, damage caused. Both cherry pickers look very, very tight, don't they? Can 
concern the teams and those cherry pickers looking on. Berserk 2 slamming down again with the needle-like weapon at the front. There's the Rose Boys trying to get hit. Notice got those arena spikes and the 600 reps per minute spinning disc is slow at the moment. You can see the teeth there and the razor blades, but it's caused no damage. This is a major surprise and it will go to the judges. I didn't think it would this last this long, did you? Well done anyway to Berserk 2 for staying in there. And this is very, very close. Epic final, that. Well, both robots were still mobile after that epic battle. So let's go to the judges for a decision. How on earth are they going to decide this one? Martin Smith on the left, Noel Shark in the middle, and Adam Harper there on the right-hand side. Let's look at the key moments again. An early attack by Hypnotis, but flung away by Berserk 2 twice. Now Berserk 2 trying to get that forklift in underneath Hypnotis. This could be a crucial attack in the final as the judges deliberate. Kill a lot, also into the fray. But this could be crucial. Berserk 2 thrown by the arena spike. Not only do you have to judge your battle against your opponent and the house robots, but also against the arena obstacles. Remember Behemoth going out earlier on in the series like that. Now, who's the most aggressive here between the two? Very, very close. I think this is the closest final we've ever had, and I wouldn't like to be in their shoes. Who has won this on damage, style, control and aggression? Very close, Craig, I think. And the judges have given it to Hypnodisc. They're through to our series semi-finals. The rose is blooming. Ken and Dave and Philippa was with them in the pits earlier. Are you going to be the spinning disc of gloom and doom and evil and terror and wreckage and carnage? <laughs> yeah. Again, that we all yeah. expect you to be. Yep. Good. Right. It's going to go round fast then. Yes, we've got it tuned. Lovely. It's going faster than ever. It's going to be a great battle. Robot ears, stand by. Hypno disc. Sadly, twin brother Derek couldn't be here today. There's Ken and Dave on the left. Three, two, one. Trolls of Evil Weevil, Michael Walsh. What a likeable but earnest young man he is. Serious has to be. Hypno Disc is deadly. Evil Weevil, stay out of trouble, I would. And maybe try and lift with those front spikes. Oh no! Michael, get away from the CPZ. Well done. Well, just deflecting a blow of Hypno Disc. This is interesting because if the weapon doesn't cause damage from Hypnodisc, what else does that spinning robot have? Mind you, it does have the disc, and look at that! Causing problems for Evil Weevil. Something flew off the shell of Evil Weevil. Good battle here. Kevin Pritchard's now taking the controls of the Beetle. That's an interesting development. And I wonder if he's trying to get those blood tip spikes in underneath Hypnodisc. Got quite a high ground, ground clearance, you know, 23 millimetres. And maybe Evil Weevil can get in underneath. That's what Kevin thinks. Holding the controls high to get a clean, crisp signal out to the beetle. But it's Hypnodisc on the attack. Something flies off again. Hypnodisc pushing Evil Weevil. Oh, slamming and lifting it. And there, don't forget, kill a lot of weights in the CPZ. Evil Weevil dangerously close. Do not back towards the CPZ. That could be the end of the beetle. Kevin Pritchard gets your machine up and away from that area. Is there a problem with the controls, I wonder? They can't get a clean run away, and it's Hypnodisc on the attack. Inexorably pushing Evil Weevil towards Killalot in the Lance. Good driving here by the Roses. And Evil Weevil. Well... A rose between two thorns, three thorns, shunt, dead metal, kill a lot. All in on the kill of Evil Weevil, immobilised in the CPZ. You do not want to be in there, Kevin Pritchard. And boys, that's what happens when you let a teacher take over. Well, Evil Weevil is exterminated. Hypnodisc goes to the rent to kill. Hypnodisc goes through. Uh, a long way to go yet. Um, it's was, not that far, you're second chance. round semi-finals already. Well, yeah, there's a few tougher robots to come, so... There's a good chance. I, 
It's just the fear the of the flipper, isn't it? That's the, the only thing. Is, yes, yeah. Yeah. the flipper, yeah. So we've got a pretty good gap at the uh, front mm. where they can get under. We have to try and avoid know, but that. Then they, but you just deflect them every time they try and come yeah. near you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah that's, far. That's, that's the defence, isn't it? Yeah. They knock them away. Yeah. So they can't get the flipping. They can't get the flipping, flipping. Flipping, flipping, flipper, flipper. Flip, 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 flip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know what we're talking about, honest. There. The 101 team with Mike and Amy Franklin and the Hypnodisc boys, Dave Rose and Dad Kenneth. Shame that Derek couldn't Robot be here today, the twin brother. By. 101. Heavy, low centre of gravity and well controlled by Mike and Hypnodisc Three, with the powerful weapon. Two, one, activate. Hypnodisc would be the favourite here at the start of a battle which will see one of these robots into the grand final. Our last seat at the great party is about to be filled by one of these. 101's extra traction on the arena floor because of the screws embedded in the tracks we've been telling you about all series. There, the little front-prodding spike as well on 101. The hydraulic ram, if you like, and a worthy weapon, is it? Onto the Hypno Disc, which spins slowly, trying to rotate up to its maximum 600 revs per minute. Backing away, Hypno Disc, under the controls of Dave Rose, who's built and flown radio controlled aircraft for the last decade. There, though, Mike Franklin at the controls of 101, we saw briefly. 101 pushed towards Dead Metal into the CPZ. Between a rock and a hard place there. Get out, get out, get out. He has got out. Well done, 101. Hypno disc spinning quickly. Mike Franklin at the controls of 101. Amy looks pensive, a little bit worried alongside him. With the furry mascot. Uh, no furry mascots there. In fact, no fur on the head of Kenneth whatsoever. Really? Uh, it's Hypno disc underneath 101. Bouncing. Very close. This semi final battle here now. Hypno disc turning away. Back into the CPZ. Dead Metal has it into his clutches. Bad driving there. Oh, and down comes the circular saw of Dead Metal. A little yellow flag there you can see on the top of Hypnotis is Derek Rose security pass into the arena. He's not here in body, he is here in spirit, and perhaps that spirit helped Hypnotis get away from trouble there. They needed something. A miraculous escape. Now on the attack, Hypnotis 101 onto the flame pit. Hypnotist's weapon, you know, throughout this semi-final has not been as potent as we thought. Power. Look at this. Two great robots push against one another. Well, the roses look on as Hypnotist now tries to get away from Dead Metal for a second time. No great power or revolutions behind that weapon now. Is there something wrong with it, I wonder? The judges look on because it could be they who make the final decision here. Who goes to the grand final? They will have to make a decision because time is running out. The judges will decide whether it's Hypnodisc or 101. Cease. They come to a halt significantly side by side. It was that close. Who won? He doesn't know. Neither do I. This is a fast on Robot Wars. Not only the judges want to deliberate further, they want to come out and inspect the robot's first hand for damage. It's that close then, they have to look for damage. Adam Harper bends down. Expert in electrical engineering, Professor Noel Sharkey from Sheffield University. And Martin Smith, another electrics engineering expert. Who sustained the most damage? I'll try and give you a few clues, shall we? Well, Sparks flying as 101 came in on the attack, up and over Hypnodisc. This for a place in the grand final. It's very, very important. 101's front prodding spike to no great avail. No, neither the blade of Hypnodisc, who took damage from dead metal, having poorly driven into there in the first place. Don't forget, that's bad control. Lucky to get away, in my opinion. On the attack, though, underneath 101, Aggression from Hypnodisc. 101 into the clutches of dead metal. Even Stevens. Still they look on and peer. Is there a dent? Is there a mark, a scratch? I think they've got their decision. We'll have it very shortly. Who's won this one?
the tightest battle in Robot Wars history. Mike and Amy look on, and the Rose Boys. Well, I'm being told what their decision is, and they've gone for hypno -dish. <laughs> To the grand final. How brilliant, are you feeling? Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Is there something wrong with your robot? Because yeah. that disc isn't spinning as fast as it was in the earlier rounds. That's right. Um, got a big impact on it. It's, it's stretching the belt a little bit. So after a few hits, yeah. we, we lose a bit of drive and it's, uh, it's a showing match after that. Well, you've got enough time now to go and make all the repairs you want for the grand final, haven't you? Yeah, yeah we have. Well, good luck. Thank Give you. it up for Hypno Dish. <laughs> This is all working. Disc spinning as fast as it should be. Yes. It Do you know how thick their armour is? Um, it was, yes. it's, it's thinner than the last opponent, so we should have more of a chance of getting through it this time. OK. Um, and they haven't got that much weaponry for you to worry about, so you're no. feeling quite confident. Well, I've noticed they've got a lifter at the back, and I think the lifter is actually higher than any part of our robot that can actually lift, so we shouldn't have any problems with that either. Hopefully. Are you going to go in there and wreak havoc? Yes. Yeah, why not? OK, well, we'll enjoy watching it then. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you very much. Sounds as if the Stegosaurus boys, Dan King, Peter Rowe and Rob Heesman are up against it from Dave and Kenneth Rose then. Among the heroes for Dan King, Peter Rowe and Rob Heisman, Jimi Hendrix and Mickey Mouse. Stand by. Hypnodisc looks so deadly. They're the Rose Boys and they're Three, Stegosaurus. Two, and the Underdogs. Hypnodisc getting that spinning disc up to speed. That's an interesting attack by Stegosaurus. On the back door. Now Hypnodisc almost backing into Matilda. In the corner patrol zone. You really don't want to do that, boys. And Stegosaurus, likewise, nearly coming head to head with Shunt. You go into that corner patrol zone, the house robot can attack you. Trying to stay out of arms. That's good driving by Stegosaurus. Spinning quickly. Great maneuverability, but a gash down the side nonetheless. Look at that power and venomous ability of the spinning disc of the Hypno Boys. They turn quickly. A frontal assault, not as dangerous. You can see the puncture mark on the side. Now they crash into the lifting tail, the spike tail of Stegosaurus, which has playing victim in the past, but not so far in this elimination round for the place in the grand final against Chaos 2. Hypno Discs. Rotating blade has been slowed, and this is a very plucky performance by Stegosaurus. Many people thought this would be over in a trice. And again, they're on the attack. They're showing good aggression here. Should it go to the judges? I think there's a gouge at the front of Stegosaurus. They're trying to get their lifting arm moving and flicking up and down. It's a question of staying out of reach. Trying to last in there, hoping that the Hypnodisc boys drive themselves into the house robots or the pits, I guess. But I think this is a marvellous display against the Rose family by the Stegosaurus boys. Is that Hypno blade slightly buckled? I don't know, a tremendous charge coming in there. Turning again. Coming in on the attack, another gouge down the side of Stegosaurus. It certainly has sustained far more damage in this elimination round. Have they ground themselves to a halt here? Stegosaurus, has it been immobilised? Oh, I don't know, in comes in the disc again. Look at the great scratches and slices out of the side of Stegosaurus. The tail is moving, the tracks are still moving. But there's no control, look, slammed against the arena wall. And now I think they are dead. Cease. The tracks have stopped, they're immobilised. And Hypno Disc are the winners, and the damage caused there to Stegosaurus decisive. Well, Stegosaurus ruled the world for long enough, but Hypno Disc just spun them into extinction. We now have our two robots who are going to go head to head to see who's our Robot Wars Grand Champion. <laughs> That was awesome. 
It was yeah. a run for your money as well, wasn't it? Yeah, we, yeah. we're on the, on the losing side for a little while, then we got the disc working, and then we come up. Because at the beginning, was it just working properly? Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All yes. the way through? Yes. Yeah, that was fine. It's the noise it makes, though. Yeah. <laughs> and explain what you have to do, because sometimes when it looks like it's slowing down, it's not, is it? Well, when we've hit the target, the motor uh, is still running fast. In fact, the disc stops. The motor has to be stopped. So I stop the motor immediately. We have a strike. Mm -hmm. That started up again very gradually. That's why we sort of back off to the. Uh, I shouldn't say this. Yes, you should. I. Uh, well, poor ones might uh, think. Anyway. They're not listening. They're not listening. <laughs> the uh, we back off, get the speed up again, and go in. And we took the wheel off uh, one side. Yeah. And that was it. You literally have minutes now mm. before the grand final. What's the problems you're facing? We've well, got a problem with the wheel, which we've to sort out. And anything else? A quick change of the batteries. Because yeah. right. we, we flattened them on that uh, battle, it was quite strong. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, effort went in, and it's going to draw the battery down. So we have to change the batteries and have a look at that wheel. Yes, you've got the wheel on. Right. It's not pretty. No, but, but it doesn't but it matter works. at this stage, does it? Will you be happy with everything when you go in? I mean, yeah. you're not going in kind of with some guns missing or you're going in complete and happy, yeah? The bit that matters is at the front and that's all right. OK, cool. Are you worried about this weather? Yes. I knew you would yeah, be. That's, I knew that's our worst nightmare. I know nightmare. you've said it all along. That's your phobia. Yeah. We've got him. Do our best. OK. Cheers. OK, I'll let you get on. Tough fight to get here? Well, it's uh, been tough all the while, I think. It, the first few rounds were probably a little bit easier, but then, then it got very much harder. As the robots and, uh, got better. Yeah. And I think we've got our hardest yet. From a little model that you found yeah. on the dining room table <laughs> to the grand final uh, of Robot Wars. I can't believe Wars. it. Yeah. OK. In you go. They're calling for you. Thanks Good you. luck. Cheers. Thank you. It was Dave's little boy who designed Hypno Disc. Quick mention for brother Derek as well, who was a big part of the team. Pushed towards the arena for the grand final. Chaos 2. Enters now the vision of the fans in the arena. Will start as the favourite. Has the fan club. And there the sleek and silver hit no disc. Ken Rose pushing it in. 68 years of age, a keen gardener. This is the grand final of Robot Wars. Roboteers, stand by. Chaos 2 with the flipper, formidable. At the controls, George Francis, Ian Swan and Richard Swan there as well. Hypnodisc with Dave two, and Kenneth Rose. One, the disc against the flipper, the speed of Chaos 2. The best two robots in the series have survived. The cream has risen to the top. Stay away from that flipper. Hypno disc with a low ground clearance, 23 millimeters, but that might not be enough. Slamming in reverse comes Chaos 2. The flipper up and over and stopping there for a moment. The spinning disc. Look at this. Now, has that in any way damaged the flipper of Chaos 2? I think it may have done. No, backs away, Chaos 2. Comes in on the attack again. You heard Kenneth saying they have to stop the motors in order to get the spinning disc rotating again. Very near the flame pit, but that I don't think will bother either of these two robots. They have plenty of armament. Oh! Flipped up and over! Chaos 2 has won the final! Flipping Hypnodisc! The fears have proven true for the Hypnodisc boys! Chaos 2 came in, got underneath the disc, ironically, flipped up and over, and Chaos 2 are the worthy winners of Robot Wars, the champions, crowned as Hypno Disc lies battered and beaten. The house robots close in. There's Sir Killalot. George Francis will try and keep Chaos 2 away from Matilda and attacks Matilda now. You can see the chain swords come off the back of Matilda. What an untidy and ghastly sight she makes. Shut. Try to get away from Chaos 2, and why not? The champions want to beat everyone. Take you on shut and flipping shunt over. So two of the house robots done. Off comes Shunt's exhaust stack. Chaos 2 once more toying with the house robots.
Lions and destroying them. This is great fun, but they will be Six. back, of course, and revenge will be in their hearts for the champions in the next series. But George Francis and his team, magnificent champions. Well, chaos by name, chaos by nature. Have you ever seen such total carnage? Not only take on Hypnodisc, he took on the house robots and beat them as well. Let's hear it for the UK Robot Wars champion, Chaos 2!